Reddit user I'm biking, I'm biking swears they're not trolling when they ask us why would anyone use React, and then they give us six points, which I guess we're supposed to debate and then change their mind about why they should use React. And the first one is kind of an interesting place to start off with. They start off with immutability. So state is immutable in React, meaning you'll have to juggle your way around use effect. So not quite sure how use effect got kind of brought into the conversation here. It's just one hook of many. Yes, there are a lot of foot guns around use effect. Not sure. Well, I guess there's some that have to do with immutability. Okay. So why did React choose immutability? That's an interesting question. And it's pretty simple, actually. If you think about it, when you want to see if something's changed, right, so that you know when to re-render, you have to look in the case of objects or arrays, you, there are two different ways to see whether an object or an array has changed. One, you can look at the content. You can say, hey, have the values in the arrays changed between the old and the new? And that's an O and operation, meaning if there's a lot of items in your array, that's gonna be a lengthy thing to do. So not ideal, but nice from a usability perspective, right? I can, I can just change a value and it's like, okay, cool, you're done, whatever. In React, you have to go and say, okay, it does everything by reference. That means that you should think of arrays and objects as immutable. They're actually not immutable. You can change them. It just won't detect if you've changed them. So you need to go and change the reference to the array or the object in order to signal to React that something has changed. And it's just because it's faster. That's an O1 operation. I can literally look at the memory address and I can say, cool, if the contract is that you've, if you're going to change this array or this object, you have to put out a new array or a new object, then I can just look at the two memory locations and say, if they're different, then it's changed. And it's so much faster. And yeah, I mean, it's a little bit of a pain. You have to learn the rules. You have to do things like using the dot, dot, dot operator to go and copy contents from one object or array into another object or array, or you have to use the immutable methods like to sorted as opposed to sort. But you know, at the end of the day, actually, a lot of stuff works this way. It's not just React. And I, I don't think it's a deal breaker. You just have to get in the mentality of doing that as opposed to mutating stuff directly. Let's take a look at five more points from I'm biking, I'm biking right after the break. Number two, they're coming out swinging with a shot at J JSX, a blast in the past. JSX is basically HTML in JavaScript, meaning all kinds of hassle. Okay. So a blast from the past because 10 years ago when React first came out, JSX was this super controversial thing. It's like, oh my gosh, you're putting your, your HTML in my JS and ah, this is awful. And oh my gosh, I can't handle it. Everybody freaked out. And now it's funny, freak out's over. And when folks do things that aren't JSX in frameworks, they're like, ah, oh, where's my JSX? I just want to have my HTML right there in my JavaScript. And yeah, I guess it can be a little bit overwhelming to see HTML kind of mixed in with your JavaScript, but I, I would ask what the alternative is. If the alternative is doing something like document create query or dollar and building out all the elements yourself, whoa, that's a hassle. And when you get into large applications, you're going to lose your mind with the complexity on that. And doing the fine-grained updating is just a super, super hassle. Speaking of hassles. Another option would be to use text templates. That's going to give you XSS vulnerabilities. That's not great. I guess maybe the alternative they're looking for is like a Svelte or a view type system where the template is specifically called out. And so your, your script lock is one thing, but it's still in the same file. You know, there are other systems where the template is in another file. But I got to say, one thing that I really like about React is the fact that you can take your code, put it through like the Babel REPL, and actually see the JavaScript that's coming out the other end. A function component in React is just a function. There's nothing weird. There's no magic going on. So if you want to not show something or show and hide something, it's just 
JavaScript logic. It's super simple, which is great. You don't have to remember that, you know, in this templating system, it's elif and if or end if or whatever. None of that stuff. It's so much easier because it's just JavaScript. So that's one of the things I actually like about React. All right, number three, they're taking on Redux. Why can't someone use context instead of archaic Redux? You can? It depends on the type of state that you're using. So if you're looking at fast moving state, things that are moving all the time, context isn't particularly ideal for that because there's no context selector. We still don't have that. And there's no way to say that I only want to look at this particular piece of data from the context. That being said, Redux is certainly not your only option when it comes to state managers and React. Redux is one of many nowadays. In fact, Redux is no longer archaic Redux. It's basically just Redux Toolkit, which is actually a lot easier and com comparable with something like Zustand, which is a lighter weight unidirectional state manager. So it's similar in form to Redux. If you want to use something that is more bi-directional, more friendly to doing something like, they'll feel like mutability, where you can just set a value on something and everything will work. Then you could use MobX or Valshio. That's how those work. If you want something that uh, is a bit more novel, but I think is a very compelling way to do state, it's uh, atomic state. You can use Re Recoil or Jotai. Those are fantastic state managers where you declare data and the dependencies between data and it automatically updates like a spreadsheet. Freaking awesome. And then there's also event-based state management, like a vector. There's just all kinds of ways to model your state in React. You don't have to use Redux if you don't want to. Number four, if you manage to get your first job in React, you'll be overwhelmed with old class components because you'll be the one who has to turn them into functional components. Yeah, it's a job. You know, at the end of the day, that's actually not a bad way to learn a code base would be to do conversions on it. Not that I'm saying I see a lot of class components. I actually don't. Like I have in a bunch of years now, I really haven't seen a whole lot of applications that use a lot of class components. I'm not saying that there aren't out there applications that do that, but I haven't seen many personally. So that's just anecdotal, but you know, that's something. I, I, I see a lot of apps. But that being said, let's look at it positively. You're getting to know the code base, which is great. You're doing something valuable for the application. And it's honestly pretty easy work. I mean, come on. You basically just put on the headphones and you can crank out, I don't know, 5, 10, 20, depending on the complexity of these components in a couple hours. And you feel like you actually move some stuff. You got a PR that people are going to go through and be like, yeah, okay, not bad. Good work. I think that's actually okay if you want to just kind of get onto a team, show some impact right away, modernize the code base. Sounds good to me. Number five, and, and this one just has me shaking my head. Everything takes 2x at least time in React compared to others. <laughs> okay, so I'm guessing we're talking about time to develop. And given the other questions, I'm guessing you got onto a code base that has class components and old school Redux. And yeah, you know, there's a lot of boilerplate there. We complained about it for a lot of time. And now it's different, right? We have function components. There's Redux toolkit. Everything is more streamlined. But even say, having said all that, I mean, come on, 2x? What, what? Versus, I mean... I think we can all name a framework that has a lot of boilerplate and, you know, feels very enterprisey and all that. Certainly, I don't think if you took a React environment that had all of the stuff that you need to go into production with, you know, testing, accessibility, localization, all of that, and then you compared it to another code base on another, like, enterprisey type framework also that had a lot of boilerplate that also had testing and localization and accessibility and all of the rest of it. There's no possible way that to develop a feature is going to be 2x times in React what it is in any other framework. I mean, come on. We're meant to be scientists, right? Computer science. This is supposed to be a science. You know, instead of having, talking about hy hyperbole like this, let's talk about facts. You know, give us some context. Give us something to kind of latch on here. 
I just think, you know, 2x, that, that, that's crazy. And, you know, honestly, thinking back on the features that I've implemented in the last five, 10 years on the front end, the time to implement the feature is usually a fraction of the time that it is that it takes to figure out what the feature is supposed to do, figure out the UI, figure out all the rest of it, all of that sort of stuff. The actual like fingers on coding go sort of thing, that's actually the fastest part. And if that takes, if that's half as fast in React as it is in other frameworks, it's it's still going to be very fast in comparison to the overall construction of a feature that goes into production. Number six, everybody's a React developer. It's saturated as all get out. Okay, I, I don't necessarily see how that's a bad thing. I will say that having interviewed a lot of React developers over the last couple of years, a lot of folks will say that they are a React developer and fine, whatever, but they lack the basic understandings of how the re-rendering system of React works, why re-rendering is good, why you shouldn't fight it, and also the reactive nature of the built-in state management mechanism. Those are two key areas where I see people not understanding React all that well. And those are areas where you can really hurt yourself if you don't understand them well. And so what I would recommend to you is to go and learn those things really well. And then you'll distinguish yourself as a developer as you go through that interview process and you'll be able to get not just access to more jobs, but potentially access to the kind of senior level or architectural level of jobs that might not be the kind of work where you're going and changing class components to function components all the time. Although I gotta say, honestly, there are days when it's nice to just be able to get into the code and just crank on stuff that you can do a thousand times over and you know you're just gonna move the ball and get stuff done. You're not, it's not gonna be a lot of hard puzzles. Just put on the headphones and enjoy. Yeah, that's that's sometimes what work is like, and sometimes that's not all that bad. You know what? I'm going to add a number seven, and this one's from me, that React has too many foot guns. When you compare React to something like a Vue or a Svelte, those have guardrails that make it a little bit easier for folks not to shoot themselves in the foot. React is an insanely powerful system that is deceptively simple on its face. And I think that lulls people into a false sense of security. They start really going in on the hooks and then those get into things like infinite loops, which are really actually very easy to do in <laughs> with just a few hooks. And I would love to see some more guardrails around that. How that would actually happen, I don't know. But I do think that when you compare react to something like a Svelte or a Vue, I do think that, yeah, we would it would be great to have some good guardrails that are beginner friendly. All right, well, I hope you had some fun with me reading through all these points about why you shouldn't use React. Of course, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to put that in the comment section down below. And honestly, go read the comment section on this Reddit post. You know, it's a little flamey at places, but it's, it's, it's really insightful and it's cool to see when people actually have to defend the thing that sometimes they can be super critical of how that flips their mentality a little bit. Because I, I do think that React has gotten into a bit of a negative space at the moment. And it's nice to see folks kind of coming around and saying, you know what? Actually, I really like React. Okay. In the meantime, of course, if you like this video, please hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and be notified the next time a new Blue Collar Coder comes out.